Um, I was going to tell the story of seeing the old guy fall off the scooter. I hope he's all right. Jesus Christ. You helped him, though. Well, what was I supposed to do? I was oh, the first person there. Billy Bird of the Rescue. Fucking guy rolling down the street, sliding on his face. Poor guy. Oh. <laughs> He terrible. was fucked up. He wasn't. He had raspberries. He knocked himself out. He came around. He was spitting out. He was pulling out little bits of teeth. <laughs> and I don't know why. It was horrifying when I saw it, but now I can't talk about it without laughing. It's just because he was on a scooter. I had basically, I was, um, oh, I'm not going to say all the information because God forbid the people that are related to him are listening. So the fucking dude was like, uh, Ah, fuck it. I'll just tell the story. I didn't do anything. I just finished <laughs> flying. We'll just exploit his fucking tragic accident. Well, nobody knows what it is. All right. I, I had just done, finished flying, right? Mm -hmm. Which everybody says is so fucking unsafe, right? Mm -hmm. Fly around and look at all this cool shit. Fly over Silver Lake to see that they took the water out of it. I didn't even realize that. And I came back. I fucking land. You know, say goodbye to everybody. And I'm driving out. You know, to the real scary thing, driving down the fucking street. And I literally pull out. I make a right turn and I don't I don't drive more than 40 yards. And I just see this fucking guy. I just this old guy takes the turn to come onto the on the little two lane highway that I'm on. He's on the opposite side of the road. And he like he went too fast. And on like a motorcycle, you can't just turn the front wheel. You're going to go down on a scooter. You know what I mean? You got to kind of look your way through the turn. And lean and your moment, momentum, you know, you're supposed to look through the fucking turn. He he was going too fast and he went into the the fucking island in the middle. <laughs> Bill. He, he fucking, he jumped the fucking curb. The whole fucking scooter went up in the back. <laughs> and he high sided, right? He just gets launched off this fucking thing and he's rolling down the street like a fucking log. Why are you laughing so hard? Because people falling down is fucking hilarious. He was fine. Oh, no. He didn't break anything. He just knocked himself out. He's a little concussed. And then he wasn't wearing a shield. And in the end, he just sort of, he was sliding on his face. Oh. So I'm going, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. As I'm watching it. And I fucking pull over. No, I made sure everybody stopped. And I got out. I was like, dude, dude, all right, just stay there. You're all right. You're all right. And, um. And he was, uh, <laughs> he wasn't saying anything. And he has no. fucking raspberry on his face. His pants were torn up. He literally got fucking attacked by a wild animal. And he's fucking laying. I feel terrible that this happened to him. But it's just afterwards, it's just funny. And he was laying there, right? And like one of his legs, he had like up, like he was chilling. And the other one was just straight out like that. And he was just like, uh, uh, and he was like coming around. And I was like, all right, man, I called 9-1. You're fine. You're fine. And then this lady shows up and she just kept going, don't move. Don't move. Okay. You're okay. Just don't move. Okay. And she kept going, okay. And it started annoying me. And then I almost started laughing. Like, I want to be like, lady, like the way you're talking is probably <laughs> <laughs> worse than what the fuck he's feeling right now. So by then, you know, like five or six people had stopped. Everybody called. So this ambulance shows up. I'm like, okay, thank God. And, he, and now he wants to get up. We just kept telling him not to get up. And um, the ambulance pulls up and he just goes, uh, he goes, is he all right? Is he all right? You're like, yeah, yeah, he, he seems to be OK. You know, we're not fucking doctors, but he seems to be OK. And he goes, all right, just tell him not to move. I already have someone on this ambulance. There's another one coming. And then he gets the ambulance and drives away. Yeah. And then we're looking down the street. and We don't see any ambulance coming. We're like, what the fuck? And um, finally, one in, uh, a cop finally came up and this guy was fucking priceless. He gets out right <laughs> fucking horseshoe bald guy right he's got the whole landing strip he just comes out looking like sergeant Riker from the rookies for anybody's old and he fucking just comes walking he looked like the guy from nypd blue the old guy showed his ass with the mustache mm -hmm. minus the mustache he just comes walking up and he just walks right up to the guy dennis he, franz yeah he just walks up like his toes are almost touching the guy's body and he just looks down at him and he goes you all right <laughs> <laughs> And the guy at that point is going like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. And he goes, all right. All right, the ambulance is going to be coming. Like, he just, his level of just like, I mean, I mean he must see like people be on fire every day. Yeah, so this guy, exactly. He just sees a scooter and this guy fucked up. He's just like, yeah, yeah, all right. He also seemed way too old to still be in a patrol car. So I think he <laughs> fucked up somehow and got busted down. Or maybe he was on his way to some uh, senior police fucking banquet or some shit. And he's just like, ah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm driving the cruiser. They know I'm a cop. I have to stop. So once that was fine, it was funny. Then we're just standing there waiting for the ambulance. But, you know, we got to get on with that day. And uh, me and there was this tall, older black dude standing there. And this, he's just like, he's like, all right, man, they're here. And I was like, yeah, yeah, they're here. And we just pulled. <laughs> <laughs> we both got in our car and fucking drove away. Oh. And uh, it was really, you know, it wasn't too bad. I mean, it wasn't too gory a scene. It was just a couple of raspberries and well, stuff. I'm glad he didn't have a but it more was, serious injury. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But it wasn't until I got on the highway and I started driving and I started thinking about it and I just started laughing. <laughs> I think it was just more the surprise that, yeah. it, that you saw it. But there is just something, just watching somebody get fucked up like that. I remember the time I was in Griffith Park and that dude came down the hill in street clothes on a skateboard. He went down that fucking what? hill. What? Are you serious? Dude, this kid where you was... Hike, where you hike up to the observatory? Somebody was going down on yeah. a, a skateboard? Yeah. That's so I was stupid. just north of where the Greek theater was, and this guy just went, yeah, went flying by <laughs> in this thing. And I was just like, oh, my God, that guy is the shit. Like, and I'm thinking, like, well, how's he going to stop? Because this is just downhill till you get into traffic. And all of a sudden, his legs start doing that, yeah. that wobbly fucking thing. And I'm mm-hmm. like, no fucking way. And I'm telling you, this guy was going like fucking 30 <laughs> miles an hour. And then he just steps off the skateboard. You always do that either one or two steps and then you're done. He was going so fast. He did like one step and it was like, who's that guy who fucking jumped 30 feet in 1969? Nobody ever broke it. He fucking head first. Yeah! <laughs> Flying. It was like the greatest stunt I ever saw. And he landed too. And he started rolling. When I tell you this guy, this guy was rolling so fast, he was like a blur. He's like, he would go like, and he hit like his elbow, which would shoot him in the air. Like, and, then, and then the best is when you're not going fast enough to keep rolling. And then you just slide in the sand like, all the way down the thing. And I was just like, and the skateboard kept going. And, I was, and, he, was, and he just... He was just not moving. And I was going like, oh, my God. And he was so – he started wiping out like 50 yards away from me. And I swear to God, it was a quarter-mile walk to get where the fuck he stopped. And he was just laying in the road not moving. Like I was like, I think this guy is fucking dead. He had, he had no helmet on. He had street clothes on. He looked like he just came back from drinking. And he just – he had like this Harrison Ford like brown leather jacket on. He just fucking launched himself. <laughs> so I get up. So I, I, I'm getting close to it at this point. He's trying to sit up. <laughs> he knows he's laying in the middle of the road. And I finally see his skateboard hit the curb on the other side. And bounce into a parked car. And then he like, like crawled. He tried to stand up and he couldn't put any weight on his leg. And he crawled. He crawled over and sat down. And by then I knew he was all right. So I was already starting to laugh. Mm-hmm. So I was just going like, dude, dude. <laughs> doing that dude while laughing i go you all right he goes he's like yeah bro what the fuck man i was just going and at that point i'm trying not to laugh i was just like dude i go that was fucking that was fucking hardcore man i never seen a wipeout like that if i was filming that fucking thing dude it was the most fucking it was the greatest log roll whatever the fuck you call that thing that dude was just I never seen it. I can't believe his shoes stayed on. Like, you know, your shoes always fly off whenever you get hit real hard. Yeah. Oh, my God. Tremendous. <laughs> fucking tremendous. And it's just as much as you feel for the person, there's just nothing funnier than watching somebody fucking wipe out if they don't die and you don't know them. Right. God, God, help me, man. So anyways, let me get um, let's get to the story here. So anyways, yeah, me and, uh, you know. Paul Verzi and a couple other buddies of ours started, you know, go to these big college games every year. So we assumed, you know, when we went to the house that it was just going to be the four of us, right? Four or five. That's what I thought it was going to be. And we show up to this house and it was the four or five of us. Plus, like, I don't, I don't even know how many other guys were staying there. Turns out this place, like this beer company rented it out. So we didn't have to kick any money in. And then they stocked the fridge with all their beer. And then all their bullshit that doesn't sell, like all those ciders and all that fucking horse shit. Um, so, and then all those other guys that we didn't know also invited some other people. And it was like fucking, I don't know, like 12 people in the house. It was fucking hilarious. Like I was literally went in there. 
I had no idea who was who, who was staying, who was friends of people staying, right? Sort of that shady type of thing. There's not a lock on your door. You're like thinking, I got a computer in there. There's sunglasses. What the fuck? Are these people cool? You have no idea who anybody is. I felt like I was on like the fucking, like if the real world did like an over 40 episode of their show, like that's what it felt like. Um, Fortunately, everybody turned out to be uh, like totally cool, but... um, I got to tell you, there was one fucking morning, though, that was so goddamn hilarious. Uh, what's his face? Paul Verzi, as I've told you before, I've told you this shit before on other podcasts, that Paul Verzi not only is not a morning person, he might be, like, the biggest, like, non-morning person I think I've ever met in my life. Like, the fucking look on his face. When, when he gets woken up before he feels he should be woken up, I swear to God... I can't even describe the – it's like he looks like he's walking out of court and he just lost the case and he was 100% right. And he's already mental, – he's mentally getting past that and thinking about how he's going to take justice into his own hands, you know, like he's going to fucking kneecap somebody. That's if you wake him up 20 minutes early, right? So we're in this fucking house, all right, and everybody in there is a married guy. All right. And uh, for you youngsters out there, I don't know if you've ever partied with like married guys, like truly married guys like me and Verzi are married. But like, you know, we go on the road like every other week, every other week, you know, you get some R&R, you walk away from it. But these guys, truly married guys, those guys that fucking wake up wife and kids. Right. Get in the car, go to work, come back home, wife and kids. Wake up the next day, wife and kids. And all the shit that comes with that, right? Susie chipped her tooth on the coffee table. And don't forget Mikey's t-ball game. And uh, there's a dance recital. Jesus Christ, right? Fucking get in the car, go to work, coming home. Can you pick up some more fucking yeast? Whatever (laughs) Whatever the fuck you got to do. Come home, wife and kids. You get the deal. Those fucking guys... When they go away and they get three days, like, you'll never see somebody go fucking. They'll drink college kids under the table. These guys were fucking animals. I almost gave them a standing ovation, the level with which that they were. They were, like, drinking till, like, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And then they would be up again at, like, 9 a.m. The same fucking guys. Which is no big deal if you're a youngster. But these guys are in their 40s. That's not done. That's like Daryl Green still running a 440 when he was, like, 41 years old. This is the alcoholic version of it, right? So what was hilarious was they had surround sound in that house. So like, you know, late at night when they had the music on, like I went to go to bed and it's fucking cranked in my room. But fortunately, there's a volume that you have. You go and you turn and you shut it off. So anyway, so we all go to bed at like three, four o'clock in the fucking morning the first night. All right. And, um. I got to be up early because I got to punch up this script for this week. I got two, three hours of work that I have to do. So I'm going to be up at nine anyway. So I didn't go too hard the first night. Um, but these fucking guys, like 8.30 in the morning, all of a sudden the stereo just fucking comes on. And I had my speaker turned off. But, you know, it's just, you know, the, the, the living room area, they had that, you know, there was no, uh, the ceiling went all the way up to the second floor, floor ceiling. So when you walked in the hallway upstairs, you looked off the balcony and you looked out through these windows out to the pool onto the water. It was fucking amazing, right? But um, you start cranking a fucking stereo with all of that, that space for it, all the sounds to bounce off the fucking wall. Dude, it sounded like a goddamn concert, right? And they're cranking this shit. I'm hearing them make, start making margaritas. <laughs> that fucking machine right crushing up the ice and all i'm thinking of is verzi so i'm laying in bed laughing my fucking ass off because i know verzi's gonna come down those stairs with a look on his face like he's gonna fucking murder everybody right um and then on top of that there was a couple hurricane fans there and they started doing those cheers they're out by the pool doing that it's great to be a miami hurricane or oh C-A-N-E-S, kids, right? Screaming. Uh, Sure enough, about three minutes into this shit, I get a text from Verzi. 
all in capital letters. He goes, dude, when did the fucking orchestra start? What the fuck? A a question mark, 20 exclamation points. So I'm fucking dying laughing. And, uh, and I'm trying to punch up the script. I'm just, just, you know, doing what the best I can. You know, this is what happens. You stay with a bunch of other guys. You got to fucking deal with other people, right? So they're doing this shit for like an hour and a half, just getting fucking loaded. Um, I'm trying to punch up the script, and Verzi's losing his fucking mind. And then at a, right around 11 o'clock in the morning. Now, granted, it's 11 o'clock in the morning, but we had been drinking till like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. There was a guitar in the house. And one of these married dudes picks this fucking thing up. He had a great voice, but what the fuck, right? He starts playing this thing. He, he played like he was playing uh, Bon Jovi's Wanted Dead or Alive. He's just sitting out there. He just starts banging on the guitar. And all of a sudden, you're just, you're like singing right in that area where you got, you know, it goes all the way up to the second floor ceiling, sitting right in the family room. And all of a sudden, you just hear this guy going, it's all the same. Only the names have changed, right? <laughs> and then when he got to the chorus, somebody else was singing the Richie Sambora part. So he'd be like, because I'm wanted. And you hear somebody else by the pool. Wanted. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I get a text from Verzi. He just likes, he writes, really? All capital letters and then like 20 explanation points of uh, exclamation points and fucking question marks. Oh, my God, dude. I was laying in this bed fucking crying, laughing. And every song was getting more annoying if you were trying to sleep. This dude, he fucking sang Paul Simon's 50 Ways to Lo uh, Leave Your Lover, which is a fucking hilarious song because the, the, like, the verse is like whispered. And then it gets fucking loud during the chorus, like a Nirvana song, you know? So he's just sitting there in, in the living room. You know, the problem is all inside your head, she said to me. The answer is easy if you take a lot of da, 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 da. There must be 50 ways to leave your lover. 50 ways to leave your lover. And then he just screams, come on, everybody. He just slip out the back, Jack. And he's <laughs> just fucking wailing on this guitar. Um. And the Margar Margarita machine was going. I just, I was just fucking laughing the whole time, punching up this fucking script or whatever. And uh, so then we get out there, and uh, I'm telling you, dude, like no, no, like nobody fucking drinks like that. College kids, I guess, will drink like that, but it's understandable. It's like, oh my god, I'm away from my parents, right? There's a different kind of desperation that a married guy who's just fucking locked in, a married guy that doesn't cheat, doesn't fuck around. You know what I mean? His only outlet is this three days that he's out there and he is drinking every drop of fucking alcohol. Dude, this doing fucking cannonballs into the pool. It was insane. You know, it's fucking funny. I already miss it. That's how much fun I had. So anyways, so after we, uh, we did the, uh, the show out in West Palm Beach, um, we came back and I bought probably the greatest assortment of Cuban, Cuban cigars ever amassed. By uh, a redheaded, balding, freckled guy, 46 years of age in the fucking uh, West Palm Beach area. Whatever. I brought a great selection of cigars. brought like 25 fucking cigars. I brought enough cigars so everybody, the, the four people that I thought were going to be there, so we all could smoke three a day if we wanted to. I knew I would have some left over. So we're huffing away late at night, laughing our balls off. Me and Verzi, for the nine millionth time, had the Matt Castle fucking argument. Um... You know, where he said the Patriots made a big mistake getting rid of the guy. And he keeps, dude, he won 11 games. And I kept going with a team that won 16, Paul. That's a five. He won five less fucking games. That's like 30% less games. So if that team was nine and seven, 30% less of fucking nine games, three games. Now that team goes six and 10. Do you understand that? You just keep looking at 11 games. Ah, fucking drove me nuts. All right. Then he goes out to KC. He gets hurt, and they fucking cheer. Midwestern, classy fucking people. They cheer. So anyways, we had that fight till like 4 in the morning. It was just a great, just a great hang, you know, just sitting there smoking cigars out by the pool right near the fucking water. It's the greatest goddamn thing ever. And then we go to bed. We wake up the next day. The fucking blender's going. The guitar guy had gone home. 
I missed the guy, man. I wanted him to fucking wake up Verzi again because it was just too fucking funny. Um, he had already gone home. Great dude. And then um, we fucking, uh, these guys start drinking, and I'm drinking waters. For like the first two hours, I'm up. I'm drinking waters. I'm doing the right thing. And then uh, I cracked open my first beer, and then I didn't want to get a beer belly. I started drinking fucking Crown Royal. And uh, still sober, took a cab to the game. Everything's going great. We get out there, and this is a funny thing. Now we go to the exact same fucking stadium where we went and we saw those Dolphin fans, all of them looking like they just dressed like they just survived a fucking hurricane and grabbed whatever they could put on before they walked out. Honestly, one of the most depressing fan bases I've ever seen in my fucking life, the Miami Dolphin fans. Then you go to the Miami Hurricane FSU game. Completely night and day. Unbelievably festive fucking atmosphere. Bunch of young people. They got their lives ahead of them. All right? Good looking people. That was just great. That college football spirit. People singing songs, doing the chant. It was fucking awesome. And um, I don't know. I started with the whiskeys and I just kept going. And uh, Jesus Christ, dude. I don't know what happens to me. I don't even like the Hurricanes, but I get I, when I go to these games every year, I root for the fucking home team, and they've yet to win. All right? I went to A&M, Alabama le- last year. In uh, College Station, Alabama wins. The year before that, LSU, Alabama. In Baton Rouge, Alabama wins. The year before that, I went to fucking Texas, Oklahoma, the Red River game. I know that they play at the Cotton Bowl neutral site, but it's in Texas. Oklahoma wins. And now this year, Miami Hurricanes in Miami and FSU wins. I, I, the amount of fucking FSU fans that I fucking was giving shit to, like I cared. I didn't even care. As they were doing that tomahawk chop, whoa, I was singing at the top of my lungs, genocide, you fat fuck. It was fucking brutal. Made a complete spectacle of myself. You know, and the Hurricanes came out just fucking killing them in the first half. And you just knew, you saw it, you saw it, you just saw it. Too much time left. They had to come out and score and they fucking didn't. Their field goal kicker missed an extra point and a fucking... Field goal, you know, I can't believe I didn't get Verzi shit because he wants to get rid of the extra point. Yeah, like fucking 99% of them are made. Yeah, and it's that 1% that adds the goddamn drama. So anyways, um, I apologize to anybody who saw me at that game. And uh, once again, I'm on the wagon. I still had like five Cuban cigars left, and I just left them at the house. I just said, I got to walk away from that habit. Um, and I'm not going to drink or smoke until... Uh, New Year's Day when I'm at the Rose Bowl. And then I'll make another spectacle of myself. I guess, you know, some of that guy earlier when he was trying to say that, uh, you know, when I was telling him I just had a certain level of notoriety, um, I am right about that because the my behavior at these football games, the fact that there's no cell phone video of it um, lets you know where I'm at in this 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 business of show. <laughs> Oh, my God, you guys. I have to tell you this story. So I'm flying. So I do an episode of Kroll's show. Um, and always, working with Nick Kroll, you're guaranteed you're going to laugh your ass off all fucking day. Can I kiss the kid's ass? And he, I, I fucking love him. I think he's, I think he's a fucking genius. So anyways, um, I, go, I go to the airport, and I'm taking the red eye, taking this 1055 flight non-fucking stop because that's how I do it. All right. I'm on a good plane. Why would I want to get off it and switch and roll the dice and get on another one? You know, let's just fucking get there. When it, when I drive up to San Francisco, I don't pull over in fucking uh, Burbank and then get, get into another car. We get it, Bill. All right. So I get on the fucking plane, right? I use my miles, bump myself up like a fancy person. You know, maybe maybe I invented the Cheesecake Factory, people are thinking. And then they see how I'm dressed and they go, oh, no. He didn't invent the Cheesecake Factory. Um, and I go to go to sit down in my seat. 
and I go to set my bag down. I was going to set it down right in front of me, and the nice fella sitting next to me goes, why don't you stick it in the middle? There's room. And he moved his bag out of the way. I'm like, all right, this guy's a solid dude or whatever. And then all of a sudden the waitress comes by, a stewardess, whatever. She comes by, um, flight attendant, whatever the fuck you're supposed to call him. She comes up, and she, uh, can I get you gentlemen a drink? And I was like, yeah, can I get a, let me get a water, please. Ice or no ice? What, however you make it. Stop acting like it's a fucking martini. It's all right. Just give me a water with ice. Thank you. Um, and the, the guy next to me, he orders a Dewar's. Neat. No ice. No nothing. Just put it in there. So they bring our drinks. All right. And I'm really thirsty. So I start sucking mine down and he just throws his back like it's nothing. Like fucking John Wayne. Right before he's going to turn around and beat up three guys three mustachioed guys in the 1930s, right? So um, I'm just sitting there, and everybody's getting on the flight, you know, and I'm looking around at the passengers, you know, I'm fucking doing whatever I'm doing, and all of a sudden the guy next to me, Mr. Dewars, goes to me, uh, he goes, excuse me, he goes, are you afraid to fly? And I looked at him, I was like, what? He goes, are you afraid to fly? And I go, no, no, I'm not. And he goes, he goes, all right, but you know, it's, <clears throat> he goes, it's okay. You know, if, it's okay to tell me if you're afraid to fly. And it's immediately getting weird. And I'm like, no, I'm not afraid to fly. And then I'm thinking in my head, wait, is he afraid to fly? And that's why he's drinking the way he just drank. And now he's hoping that I'm going to be afraid to fly. So he, you know, he just wants to open up. That's what I'm thinking. And I, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not afraid to fly. And he won't leave it alone. He goes, all right, because, you know, you're, you're, you're fidgeting. You're looking around at other passengers. And I'm sitting there looking at the, like, is this guy fucking serious? And I go, no. I go, I'm not afraid to fly. So now I'm like, fuck this guy. I'm not talking to this guy for the rest of the flight. This guy's weird, man. It's like 30, just get paint the picture. He's like 32-year-old, wiry <clears throat> In shape, but like wiry white dude. He's got a scully cap on with fucking glasses. Um, <clears throat> you know. And uh, he goes, uh, like, there's like a minute of silence and people are still getting on the plane. And then he goes, hey, sorry about that. Sorry, we, we just we just got off on the uh, wrong foot. He's like, my name's so-and-so. He goes, what's your name? And then I'm thinking in my head, like, what's my name? My name's Frank. I wanted to give him like a, but I just, for some reason I just went, it's, it's Bill. And he goes, oh, hey, Bill. And he goes, nice to meet you. So we shake hands. And I'm just looking at, I don't have any poker face. I'm looking at the guy like, what the fuck is your problem? I'm not even trying to not, I'm not trying to be pleasant. I'm already done with this guy. So then the guy goes, oh, hey, Bill. He goes, why are you going to Indianapolis, Bill? Right? Like he's fucking interrogating me. And I, I'm like, is this guy fucking serious? And I start doing the math in my head going, wait, is this guy like an air marshal or something? And I'm like, no, he's not. He's fucking slamming booze over here. Fuck this guy. So I just go, I go, look, I don't, I don't have to answer your questions. <laughs> That's it. And I just look straight forward. <clears throat> he goes, okay, now I'm concerned. Okay. I am concerned. And I'm looking at him like, Concerned about what? He goes, you're fidgeting. You're, you, you have issues with other passengers and blah, blah, blah. blah. He starts painting like, like this, like he's been, I don't know what the fuck, like psychologically breaking me down. All right. So now this, by this point, they've closed the fucking, the door to the fuselage and we're starting to taxi. And I just finally look at the guy and I, and I go, I go, you know, I, I came up with the fight. One point, I literally stick my hand out because he kept saying I was nervous. And I stick my hand right in front of his face and I hold it level. Oh, that's what I did the first time. Yeah, I, I hold it level. I go, I'm not nervous. And he goes, well, anybody can do that. And that's when I was like, fuck this guy. I'm not talking to the guy. Sorry, fuck this story up. Then, then, he, then he came back, got my name. Now he's going, why are you going to Indianapolis? And I finally look at him. I say, listen, pal, I'm drinking waters. You're drinking doers. Okay. There's no issue over here. And then he goes, it wasn't doers. What she gave me wasn't doers. Really? What was it? Some sort of spy juice? You fucking jerk off. 
this point, I want to punch him right through his fucking stupid wiry glasses. Right? So he's going like, you look around hostile. And I said something that just ticked him off. I was just, yeah, dude, I go, I don't have to answer your questions. All right, leave me alone. And then he goes, uh, he goes, do, he goes, he starts going like, okay, now I am really concerned right now. He goes, why are you going to Indianapolis? And I just look at him. You know what I start doing? I start doing like this Ryan Gosling. You know that little smirk, that fucking Mona Lisa smile he has as he smirks his way through all his fucking movies? I, do, I go full on Ryan Gosling. Now I'm not talking to this guy. And I just keep looking at him. And I give him that little half a smirk. And I just shake my head. That's my game now. That's, this is my game. It's like if you're going to be a dick right now with your fucking delusional authority. Right? That you're going to, like, we're in fucking Guantanamo, and you're going to waterboard me. Huh? There's no water. There's no board. Go fuck yourself. Here's my smirk, and I'm just going to shake my head at you like you're a fucking pathetic human being. This is what I'm doing. Right? And this is the funny thing. I'm such a dick. All I have to say to the guy is I'm a comedian. I'm going to do a sold-out show there, and that would make him back off. But I'm a dick. I'm like, fuck this guy. I want to see where this is going. So now he's all fucking amped up, and he starts dropping... F, you know, he's saying the F word. He's sitting there going, if you don't, he goes, if you don't fucking answer my question right fucking now, I am going to hit that call button. We're sitting there taxiing down the fucking, getting in the line. I'm going to fucking hit this fucking button if you blah, 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 blah. And I'm just fucking Mona Lisa smile, smirking, just shaking my head like you are a fucking retard, right? So now he's, he's saying the F word so much. The lady who's sitting in front of me, diagonally in front, right in front of him, turns around and looks at us. And now my heart's racing. I'm like, where's this going? This is going to be great. I am 100% fucking innocent. This guy's drunk. And I think he's going to hit that button. Oh, I got a feeling he's going to hit that button. What's going to happen, right? I want to see what the pilot looks like. Let's see where the fuck this is going, right? So he goes, if you don't fuck you, he starts, he starts bringing his hand up to the button going, I'm going to hit that button. You don't think I'll fucking do it? I'll hit that button. And I'm sitting there smirking at him, thinking in my head, go ahead, hit the fucking button. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens, right? So finally, now he wants to hit the button, and he can't fucking find it. And it's in, in defense of him, I couldn't find it either. I was looking up there. I half wanted to hit it myself. Then he finally, he finally finds it, and he hits it. Boom! Right? And now I'm just like, holy shit, what's going to happen? And he's sitting there going, yeah, huh? You want to fucking play this game? You want to fucking play this game? And I'm surprised. I mean, it took like fucking like 30 seconds before a flight attendant the one who gave him the booze, which evidently wasn't booze, comes over. And at this point, we're like doing that shit where we're behind a plane. We're almost ready to take off. Like we're pulling up and then stopping, pulling up and then stopping as planes are taking off. So she goes, yeah, what's the problem over here? And he goes, uh, I'm not comfortable to fly with this guy. This guy, he's fidgeting. He's looking around at other fucking people, blah, 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 blah. blah. He's doing all this thing, right? And then the stewardess looks at me, and I'm just sitting there fucking my little smirk, just shaking my head. And I'm just looking at this dude, just shaking my head like this guy's out of his fucking mind. I don't say a word. And this guy goes on and on and on about his fucking psycho babble about how I'm this security risk. So she goes, to, so she goes okay, um, any other passengers? Have you... Noticed anything? She's talking to everybody first class at this point. <laughs> Has anybody noticed anything odd about this guy? And the lady who was sitting right in front of the dude diagonally from me turns around. She goes, yeah, I've been listening to this guy ber berating this other passenger. She's on my side. And I haven't said a fucking word. This is great. And I'm just sitting there. Smirking. Then the stewardess looks at me and I shrug my shoulders like, I don't know what to tell you. So finally she said, sir, do you have anything to add to this? And I just said, I, look, I'm just a guy trying to go to Indianapolis. This guy over here, he starts slamming his doors. I kind of felt like a rat when I said that. I go, he's slamming his doors. Next thing you know, he's dropping the F-bomb to me. Then I'm thinking, oh, fuck. I just said bomb, right? Fortunately, nothing happens. So now another fucking... The male stewardess comes over right now. He's going like, what's going on? And the captain of the fucking now at this point, we pulled over and the plane has stopped. 250 people trying to get to Indianapolis and jerk off over here. Can't hold this fucking alcohol. Who just watched a uh, person of interest every every I guess evidently I have no fucking idea. Now the plane is stopped. This fucking jerk off has stopped the plane interrogating a goddamn comedian like I'm in the fucking Taliban and like he works for the CIA, right? 
So now we're just sitting there. <laughs> and the captain is up front in the plane, like, saying to the stewardess, is going, basically relaying, do I really have to fucking come back there? This is the last flight of the night. Is there really a goddamn problem? And that was the vibe. And they finally said to the douche sitting next to me, are you going to be okay to fly with him? And at that point, it appeased his fucking ego that he was somehow in control. And he goes like, you know what? Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So they go, okay. So now the plane's going again. And now, we're, now we fucking come around and he's sitting there fucking he's in my ear. And at this point, I am laugh like the fucking laugh you hear me doing the podcast. That's what I'm doing. And he's sitting there going, oh, I, I, he goes, you know what? I'm glad. I'm glad you, st- I, I hope you fucking do. I hope you fucking try something. I hope you fucking try something when we're up there. I really hope you fucking try something. And I'm just fucking like gut busting, laughing, shaking. Like, what are you going to fucking do to me? What are you going to do to me? Huh? Are you going to punch me in the face? You fucking wiry jackass with your fucking glasses on, you know? That's a federal offense. You're going to go to jail if you do that or something. I don't know what, right? So I'm just sitting there fucking laughing at the guy going, I actually, at one point, I put my fucking little eye pillow thing on, you know, like I'm going to sleep. Oh, I had that out too when the stewardess was talking to me. I was like putting it on as this total mind fuck. Like, I, I don't know what this guy is. I'm just trying to go to Indianapolis. I'm going to sleep. And um, so I got, I got my fucking eye thing on, right? As he's sitting there threatening me, just I was going total passive aggressive. It's like, dude, I'm so not concerned with you. I'm literally putting a blindfold on. All right. So this fucking guy, he starts going. He goes, yeah, he goes, you think you fucking won this? You think you fucking won this? He goes, you know, my dad is my dad. He started saying his dad's some major CEO in Indianapolis. Doesn't sound like a fucking made up story. I swear to God, this is all true. He goes, "My, my dad is some a major CEO. In Indianapolis, and I will have you fucking arrested. And the lady turns around again. I will have you fucking arrested the second we get on the ground. I'm thinking, like, for what? For what? Sitting here, you fucking loser. Learn how to hold your alcohol. All right? And he starts describing the view that I'm going to have when I go to jail, like some fucking Law and Order episode. Oh, you're going to love it. You'll be able to see Lucas Oilfield and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just sitting there cracking up, laughing. And then there's this pause, right? And I'm thinking, finally, he finally shut the fuck up. It's like a three, four minute pause. He finally just gave up because I wasn't giving him anything. I was just laughing and shaking my head. I was being a dick to him. I was because I was enjoying it. And then there was like a three minute pause. And then all of a sudden he just goes, why are you going to Indianapolis, Bill? (laughs) So we're like 20 minutes into the flight. And I got to be honest with you, my adrenaline was so going during all of that because I knew I didn't do anything wrong, but I thought we were literally going to go back and there was going to be fucking cops there. And like if, 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 if the fucking stewardess or the pilot asked me who I am and where I'm going, I'm going to tell them I respect your authority. You're just some je- I don't you don't have any fucking authority. I don't have to answer your questions. It was pro- it was one of the most fun experiences I've ever had with another human being. Like when somebody thinks that they have power and you know they don't, and all they can do is try just keep bluffing and raising their voice and start cursing at you. And if you just start laughing at them, the look on their face is fucking priceless. So the last thing he said, he said, why are you going to Indianapolis, Bill? Right? And I fucking... Started howling, just fucking holding my stomach, shaking my head. And with my fucking eye pillow thing on, right? And I know I'm going to get a ton of shit that I wear one of those. I, they're fucking underrated. Get the one at Brookstone where it's literally a pillow. I'm telling you, you could fall asleep 12 noon facing the sun. It's awesome. So anyways, like after he, he asked me, what, what, you know, where you going, Bill? It was like, it was like a 10 minute, like probably 10 minutes had gone by and I can't fucking sleep because it's so funny to me. I can't wait to tell the story to every comic I know. I can't wait to try it on stage to see if it's funny or whatever. Uh, So finally I just like, ah, fuck it. Maybe I'll just get on my computer and I bring up my eye pillow 
and I like, I got to look at the guy because I know he's fucking staring at me, waiting for me to do something, right? So I lift it up. I get my fucking Mona Lisa smile going, and I look over at the guy, and dude, he is fucking passed out. <laughs> He looked like he got shot. He was sitting there like his head was just hanging straight down. And any time the plane moved, like his head was, I mean, he looked like he got knocked out. And for the rest of the fucking flight, old fucking, uh, oh, what's Matt Damon's character? Jack Ryan. Old fucking Jack Ryan over here is just, you know, the sky marshal. The fucking booze bag and God knows what else he was on. He was just completely out, passed out. For the rest of the fucking flight. And this is how much a dick I am. I was having so much fun with this guy. I start, I can't sleep. So I start slamming waters. Because I want to have to get up and take a piss just to see if this guy's going to freak out. Because this security risk is getting up. And this, the joke was on me. He never regained consciousness. And then I really had to take a piss. But I'm such a stubborn fuck. I was holding it because I wanted to make sure he was awake when I got up. Because I was going to give him a little smirk, and then I was going to get up to <laughs> see if he hit the call button again. Um, but he didn't. He didn't wake up till we, we hit the ground. And um, and then it's funny. Then he woke up, and it was like four hours later. So now he had kind of slept off whatever the fuck this guy was on. And I'm sitting there smirking, waiting for the guy to start talking to I me. Mean, he won't look at me. And I, I, and I think at that point he kind of fucking realized that maybe he got a little... Uh, a little extra, a little too patriotic. So we stop. We stop at the gate and everything, and we're going to get up. So I grab my shit. I get up, and I'm just kind of looking at him, and he won't look at me. And then the lady who was sitting in front of me had this big smile on her face. She goes, "How you?" She goes, "How you doing?" And I went, "Good." I go, that, "I go." That was an interesting one, and I said it really loud so the guy heard, and he didn't say anything. And to, this is what he did to try to save face. His pillow was kind of stuck behind was kind of stuck behind his shoulder in like a weird place. So he was frustrated with it. So he he ripped it out from behind him and kind of threw it down on the floor and went Ugh. like <laughs> try to do some caveman grunt to try to still have some sort of uh I don't know what. So so that was my flight to Indianapolis, people. Um you know what? How how far into the fucking podcast are we? That was a long that was a long fucking story. Speaking of uh, physical harm, the lovely Nia. Um, last night she um, she she like bent down to get something out of her bag, and there's this little fucking ledge above it that she can stick like a couple of glasses and a bottle of water, and she was underneath it, bent down, came up full speed, and the corner of it hit the fucking top of she hit the top of her head right on the corner of it like brutally hard and um i gotta tell you i feel bad that she's not part of this fucking little story here see if i'll bring her in because i failed miserably as a human being nia do you want to be in on this story of you hitting your head okay i okay I'm setting it up now. So anyway, she fucking hits her head. Like fucking bam. All right. Sounded like somebody dropped a suitcase on the floor. And then I swear to God, she hit her head. She goes, ah, and she grabbed her head. And then I swear to God, she just started crying. Like a goddamn toddler. And I have to be honest with you. I didn't know what the fuck to do. I just got to the point near where you hit your head and you started crying like a toddler. And Why does it gotta be like a toddler? Because that's what it reminded me of. It's like when a little kid, like if an adult hits their, you know, stubs their toe, hits their foot, it's goddamn motherfucker. And then you blame your whole family. Get out of the living room. You know, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. You started crying. I did. It was really painful. <laughs> like bawling. Yeah. And uh, I was kind on of a surprised scale, at myself. On honestly. a scale of one to five, five being the best. Five. How would you, no, no. How would you rate my reaction to it? Oh, zero. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
What are you I, I went in and I got you some tissues. This is what Bill did. I didn't know what to do. It freaked me out. I hit my up. head. Boom. I was shocked at it first because it really did feel like someone had just come up and just walled me on the noggin. <laughs> so I was shocked. And then the pain started kicking in. And like <coughs> it was really, re- like it was like that little, it was, it was that corner the of corner, that ledge. Yeah. And it went right into my scalp. And I didn't know if I was bleeding or what. And I, I think, yeah, normally I'd be like, <sighs> like most people. But right. it just, I, I don't know what happened. Just the floodgates opened and it felt better to cry than to pretend like it was just like, oh, like a nuisance. Like it really, really hurt. So Bill's like, oh, no. Are you okay? <laughs> so we're good so what far. What else was I supposed to do? So we're good so far with that. Okay. And so I'm just sitting there crying, and he goes, oh, 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 and he runs into the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even give me a tissue, like a proper clean. I couldn't Kleenex. find any. He gets me toilet paper, okay? <laughs> if there is a choice between tissue paper and toilet paper to comfort someone, ah, please Jesus. find the Kleenex. Okay. It's softer. It's just... You know, it's just, it's a little thing, but it makes a big difference. It's a cut up. So then he starts wiping my face <laughs> with the toilet paper. <laughs> and away. he's rubbing it on my face. No, oh, no. Wait. And he's wiping my shit. <laughs> he's doing like this U shape from my eye to the other eye, using my chin as like the go between. <laughs> It wasn't that rubbing, bad. Rubbing the fucking <laughs> one ply two toilet paper back and forth across my chin. And he's going big tears, big tears. <laughs> they were huge. And it's like I never what, seen anybody cry tears. What is that supposed to mean? Was it big tears? Big tears. It wasn't like, <laughs> oh baby, you know. It was, he was just scraping my face I gotta be honest with, with you. this toilet paper going, big tears, big tears. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. It was fucking, it freaked me out. It was the worst moment of comforting you've ever offered in your life. Yeah, you you were at a head. complete loss for what to do. Because it was like you stopped being like a woman and you became like this two-year-old. And it was just like, boom, and you're just like, yeah. <laughs> I was just like... I didn't know what to do. If we were at home, I would have got you a popsicle or something. Oh, and then you said, do you want some water? I'm like, what the fuck does water have to do with anything that's right what, now? That's what my parents always did. If you hurt yourself and you cried, they went and they got you water right out of the tap. <laughs> and then you sat down and then your face was all dry and salty. And they said, all right, go back outside again. That's it. I spent most of my childhood outside. That's what parents did. All right, get outside. All right, you kids. You're driving me nuts. Get outside. <laughs> And you sent him outside. That's what you wanted to do with me in that moment. You wanted to send me away so you wouldn't have to deal with it anymore. I just wanted you to stop fucking crying. <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's just like to see another adult. Mia, can you imagine if I, if I ever hit my fucking head and started crying the way you did? I mean, what would you know? What would be coming out of your mouth? I don't know. I'd be like, oh, come here, baby. And I'd hold you to my chest or whatever. Mia, and I'd rub your back. You're full of shit. If I fucking hit my head and started crying like a little... <laughs> girl was it really that like it was like a little it was like a little uh, I, it was we went st- I, I, I'm fucking stammer here <laughs> you stammering jackass yeah I've known you for 12 years I've never seen you I've seen you like you see me cry before a couple times in the and... kitchen you fucking you, oh. you, you cut yourself with a knife and even then you didn't cry as much that was like you know you had a balloon and the thing <laughs> went, went off your wrist and floated up in the air <laughs> There was just no comfort in you. It was, uh, yeah, I'll admit, I'll admit, um, not only did I drop the ball in that moment, it's been 24 hours and I still don't have a better approach. <laughs> it was so fucking bizarre. Don't ever do that again, Neil, all right? It, what do you talk? I, the thing is, the really sort of horrible thing about it, the, the biggest injustice of it all, the fact that you weren't able to comfort me, is that I was trying to plug in your fucking computer. Isn't that thing. amazing? 
Isn't it amazing? I knew somehow it would come back to me and it'd be my fault that your dumb ass <laughs> ducked underneath a ledge and then lifted your head up. Ric Flair wouldn't have done it that hard to sell a fucking move. I didn't realize it was there. I was plugging in your computer you and you had up. the audacity to be the worst comforting person in that moment ever. Scratching my face with that oh, yeah. one ply toilet paper while saying big tears, big tears. <laughs> Which is like, what does that even mean? It's like I was out in the outfield in Little League again. No batter, no batter. Big tears, big tears. <laughs> he just kept saying, Sawing batter. He just kept saying big tears over and over again. What did that mean? You were I, just I, commenting on it. <laughs> I, I I didn't I didn't know what to do. I mean, you were crying at a fucking level. Like, I mean, I've been at funerals and seen people cry less than what the fuck you were doing. I didn't know what to do. Okay, I'm sorry. You caught me off guard. Well, tell me, what am I supposed to say? Just, just give me a to, fucking you're blueprint. You're just supposed to like you know take me into your arms and like hold me and like you know rub my back or something. That sounds like a commercial for one of those love songs like Time Life Presents. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like a real thing that people do to well, each other. Well, I'm telling you that's what I would like. You asked me, so I'm telling you what I would like. I'd like your sunglasses to not be so big. <laughs> How about that? I'm channeling Jackie O on this trip. Jackie O, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> if you ever hit your head again and start crying like a two-year-old... <laughs> Just give me Kleenex, okay? That's all I ask. Don't give me toilet paper. Deal. I don't have to say anything? What do you mean you don't have to say anything? You have to comfort me, jerk. Give me three things to say. Are you okay? Come here. It's going to be all right. You cried way longer than that. Y yeah. And you just have to, like, comfort Keep me. Keep saying that? Are no. you going to be okay? <laughs> Come here. It's going to be all right. How disconnected are you from human emotion that I have to teach you how to comfort somebody? Crying was a sign of weakness where I came from. Okay, and well, fucking, that was a long time you ago. You man the so. fuck up. Well, man or woman, you did. You know? I don't... You know what happened in my neighborhood when a fucking I, kid cried? Uh, all right? You know what happened there? You know what? I'm really they tired of hearing about your... Slapped in the face fucking. and given a Bud Light. <laughs> Rockwellian childhood or whatever it is that you're always describing. They stuck your head under the water of an above ground pool you and your family until they stopped seeing bubbles and then they like pull you back up again. Fucking our gang or whatever it is. Like you really like paint a picture like you grew up in like this hard scrabble kind of fucking environment and you didn't. You don't think so? You fell out of a tree and your parents are like, ah, shake it off. Okay. That is what happened though, right? What? Didn't you? Was it you that fell out of a tree? No, I got hit by a car. Oh, right. You got hit by the car. You poor baby. And my parents sent away the ambulance because they didn't like the, the hospital they were taking us to. And I got in a cab and they took, took us to the hospital they wanted to. I remember my mother kept telling me, don't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. Oh, no wonder. Okay. All right. Well, I get it now. No, yeah, I'm not saying I fucking grew up in a, in a, in a, in a slum. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it was it was different back then. It okay. was yeah, it was different. All right, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm a fucking badass, but like I I'm not going to apologize for having a fucked up worldview, okay? Adults taught me this shit, so. All right. Yeah, go talk to them. <laughs> I will. I'll talk, I'll talk to your parents about it. Yeah. Christmas. I don't know. Just anybody roughly their I age. I'm bone to pick with you, Mr. Mr. Yeah, but Clark. you know something, Nia? There was an overcorrection. Meaning what? That there's a reason why it went from fucking walled up douches like me who only know how to go, oh, big tears, big tears. <laughs> as I grab toilet paper and make a U shaped fucking <laughs> sign around your face. That we went from that to those fucking hipster hoodie wearing beard fu bearded fucking pussies who act like they're 14 years old and awkward and on their first fucking day. Does every generation think that they're tougher than the, like the next generation? Is that just what happens? I don't think I'm tougher than anybody previous to me and I don't feel like I'm tougher than anybody like anybody now that there's so many fucking places in just the United States alone where kids grow up way tougher than I did. But what I'm doing is I'm defending the fact 
that I don't know what to do when an adult <laughs> all right. hits their fucking head and cries like a two-year-old. I all right? got it. Nia, I'm not trying to have some like Olympics backstory here before you watch me play ping pong or some other stupid fucking sport that nobody cares about. I'm the next thing. Oh, here's a great story for you. Brian, you might like this. Do you know I was a hero this week? Really? I was actually, I did something heroic. I have never, I have never done anything heroic in my life. Okay? And believe me, I've walked by house fires and saw people screaming, saying there's a ladder right there. Just put it up. And I walked away. I walked away. Pretended like I didn't hear him. I'm that kind of a fucking guy. Um, No, this is the deal. It was uh, Sunday. And, you know, people go to brunch on Sunday. I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'll go to brunch. I'll go to brunch, right? Remember that bit? Huh? Pays $18. Is that asbestos? Is that asbestos? How did that bit go? Is that asbestos? I thought it was pesto. It's asparagus. I can't even remember. So we go to brunch, and, uh, you know, it's the usual shit. Do you want to sit inside? Do you want to sit out, outside? As a redhead, I'm always going inside. Let's fucking sit inside. I got enough freckles. I've had enough fucking pain in my life. Please, <laughs> let's sit inside. Uh, but, you know, I'm always with broads because they always want to go to brunch. Let's sit outside. It's so nice. It's always fucking nice when they go to brunch. It's never raining, is it? Right? So, all right, let's sit outside. So we, we sit outside. And because I'm the gentleman, I have to sit with my back to the road so I can brace, you know, and protect my girlfriend and her mom in case a bread truck comes flying in because the guy's text messaging or something, right? So I'm sitting there, and uh, all of a sudden, I just feel it. I just feel like something's fucking wrong and something. My caveman DNA, like when you're getting stalked, by a saber-toothed tiger just kicks in and something just tells me to fucking look left. And I look left and here comes this crazy fucking lady. And I'm talking crazy. I'm talking Shutter Island. You remember that chick that shushed Leonardo DiCaprio? Is that the second Leonardo DiCaprio fucking reference? There you go. You remember that chick who shushed him in Shutter Island? That's what this girl looked like except with sort of brownish red hair. Okay. It's basically one of these people who should be getting professional help. It's straight up batshit crazy. And uh, this just this state is bankrupt, so they just let them go. They just let these fucking people go. You don't see Sarah McLaughlin whining about these people. Come out and rescue these fucking, the, the, these people who are talking to telephone poles. It's all about the dogs with her. Her priorities are so fucked up. It's ridiculous. I hope she sees this. I am so disappointed in you, Sarah McLaughlin. Huh? When are you going to grow up and stop whining about those little pussy-ass fucking dogs? All right, that was mean. All right, let's get back to it. So she starts coming down the street, and she's like, she looks like she's going to start fucking crying. Okay? Like, and it's just one of those things. You know, you just feel this fucking person's going to do something, and I have a feeling they're going to do it to me. So I, I'm, I'm working out my shit. I'm like, for, fortunately, the chairs were these really light wicker, sort of kind of douchey, brunchy chairs. So I was just going to grab the fucking chair and I was going to smash her in the face if I didn't have time. Or if I had time, I was going to leap to my feet on my bad fucking foot and out like a lion tamer. Ah, get back, crazy person, right? (laughs) Start whipping her with the fucking tulips on the nice, beautiful brunch table. That's what I was going to do. So she doesn't lunge at me, but she walks by me. There's that awful moment, the blind spot. You know what I mean? Where she's not to my left, she's not to my right, she's right behind me, and she fucking goes by me. And I'm like, thank God. Like, I was seriously fucking nervous. And I look left again, just to, you know, I don't know why I look left again. And then I see this fucking sad looking woman slowly following the crazy person with this look on her face like she had been wronged. I didn't, uh, next thing I know, next thing I fucking know, She's talking to the table next to us and talking to us, talking about how that crazy woman had just walked up to her, reached up to her sweater, and just fucking ripped. <laughs> I don't know if she had a brooch. She just fucking took it off her chest and walked away with it. And I'm looking at the lady, and she has the lady, and she has this fucking hole in her sweater where something had clearly been ripped off. And for the life of me, I don't know why. I immediately just got up. I don't know why. I have no fucking idea why. I, what the fuck? I don't do this shit. I get up and now I'm going down the street following the Shutter Island lady with no training whatsoever in this situation. I'm literally walking and now I couldn't sit down. 
I couldn't get sit down. Like I, I have this this fucking Lee Marvin. I'm gonna I'm gonna make shit right moment, and then I go. You know what? Maybe I'll sit down. I look at the biggest pussy ever, and not only is my girlfriend there, my mother's there. So I had to keep going. So now I'm following this girl, and I'm literally. <laughs> I'm f- I've never been so fucking nervous in my life because it would have been bad enough if, we, if it was like a crazy dude. A crazy guy is scary. But at least, you know, if, if, if it gets physical, I mean, what, what, are, what are the rules in that? Do you know? Brian, what, you know, you can't hit a woman, but what if she's crazy and she just stole a brooch? How about a jab? Just kind of get her mitt in the face like Larry Holmes so she doesn't see the overhand right coming. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know what to do. So, but I can't go back to the table where I'm going to look like a bitch in front of my girlfriend and my mom. So I'm like, fuck, why did I get up? Why did I get up? Why didn't I just, why didn't I say sit inside? I wanted to sit inside, but I didn't want to seem like a rude prick in front of my girlfriend's mom. Like I tell her what to do. Like she's this kept fucking woman. So now I'm in this situation. So I'm walking down the street and this is what I do. She's on the sidewalk. I'm literally in the street. Okay. I'm like, is that circumnavigation? I'm doing some police shit where I'm staying outside of whatever she can throw at me, scratching. It's one of these people, you got to get like a tetanus shot if you roll around the ground or hepatitis or some shit. So I'm like, what am I going to do? What do I do? So I don't know what happened. I just said, I, <laughs> I basically, I just started going, hey, uh, hey, sweetheart. Hey, sweetie. I, I, I basically, I think I started calling her affectionate names from like the 1940s. Hey, uh, <laughs> fucking tall drink of water. And I finally got her attention. And she turns around and looks at me with this crazy look with tears in her eyes. And I just say, uh, I, I, I think you have something that doesn't belong to you. And meanwhile, there's a fucking pathetic lady who just let her walk up to her to begin with. It's like, he didn't see that she was crazy. That's why I'm in this situation, right? She fucking, she ends up walking up to the girl. And the, when I said, I think you have something that doesn't belong to you, she just sort of looked at me like in slow motion, lifted up her left arm. And she had this green pea soup looking sweater on. And she had the brooch pinned to like just right around her wrist. And she just held it up. So at this point, I'm like, I'm not touching this bitch. (laughs) So I let the the, the fucking victim lady with the sad puppy dog eyes, she comes in. And I'm basically sitting there like an NHL ref with respect for two goons that are about ready to go at it. Right? And I'm just going to jump in. When I see that I can jump in to stop this, this fight that's going to happen without getting hit myself. And uh, so anyways, the lady starts un- unpinning the brooch. And the whole time, she's, she basically followed my lead by being nice. She just kept going, thank you. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate this. And she couldn't get the fucking thing off. It was like one of those action movies where like, the clock's going down for the bomb. And I'm sitting there going, lady, in my head, I'm like, would you get that fucking brooch off this crazy bitch's arm. And I just kept looking at her right hand because I knew at some point she was either going to gouge her eye out, just do some crazy shit, right? Like, you know, the the scrap metal that these people pick up and floss their teeth with. She was just going to stick her right in the jugular. So finally, long story short, she gets the fucking brooch off and then we we, we back away. It was like a... uh, Exchange like we like we gave some money briefcase and we got the the abducted kid back and we fucking walk away, and I'm like oh fuck thank God thank God that worked out and I actually walked back to the to the brunch, all right, walk back to the brunch and I got a fucking applause break, from like all these people eating eggs Benedict and eggs Florentine it was fucking awesome. I was a goddamn hero this week, people. A scared nervous fucking hero, dude. I'm telling you, Brian, I didn't come within seven feet of this woman.